Now on Sunrise, the path to vaccination. Governor Walls holding off on the next stage, the milestone he wants to hit before he allows more people to qualify. Downtown Minneapolis looking more like a war zone. An inside look at the security preparations ahead of Derek Chauvin's trial. More sunshine and mild temperatures continue. Now I'll let you know those afternoon highs plus our next chance for flakes. And new details into Tiger Woods' horrific rollover. What investigators are searching for that could give them clues into the moments before the crash. And it's a crisis many families are facing, finding affordable childcare. The two moms who had to choose between their career and doing what's best for their family. It's Thursday, February 25th. Care 11 Sunrise starts now. After months of waiting and wondering, the COVID-19 vaccine rollout is well underway. More than a million doses have been given out in Minnesota alone. How is it going for you, Sunrisers? Have you gotten your vaccine? If so, we want to know all about us. Tell us. Join the conversation. 763-797-7215. Yeah, we'll be sharing some of your comments coming up in just a little bit. But of course, we've got to get to our traffic and weather this morning. First, weather with Guy. Hey, another mild day, Guy? Yeah, and more sunshine, too. So don't forget those sunglasses. We'll be kicking off the morning nice and clear. So beautiful sunrise in store. Get them cameras ready for us. Hashtag care 11 weather we want to see those sunrise photos clear skies 25 feels like 16 so again we're going to want to dress for the chill this morning something we uh, really didn't have to do the past couple of mornings just because it's been so mild but still mild temperatures in store for the school day planner notice high today at about 36 we'll hit our high uh, right around right around uh, 2 3 p.m. or so and then we'll start to fall down to about 35 look at all that sunshine and good morning for waking up in Anoka. Here's a live look at Highway 10 and 169, where traffic slowly, slowly starting to get a little bit more crowded. You shouldn't have to leave early at any point uh, so far this morning. No crashes, no delays. We'll be tracking drive times coming up in a little bit. Thanks, Alicia. Happening today, we're hoping to learn more about what's next for vaccine distribution here in Minnesota. The governor is making an announcement at 1215 today. Jennifer Austin joins us live from the Capitol this morning with what we know so far. Jennifer. Yeah, good morning. So here's what we know for sure. According to a spokesperson for the governor, the state will wait until at least 70% of people in the 65 and older category in Minnesota are vaccinated before moving on and opening opening up vaccinations to more groups of people. Uh, the spokesperson said that they expect to hit that mark, that 70% mark by the end of March. So now the question, who's next? Well, we're hoping to learn more about that today when the governor makes that announcement at 1215. We're told he's going to talk about the next phase of vaccine distribution here in Minnesota. So why not wait until everyone in the current eligibility groups are vaccinated? Why move on at 70%? Here's what the governor had to say about that. At that point in time, it's becoming more difficult to get to people. Either it's vaccine resistance or we're still trying to search them out. Then do you pivot and start doing the others? And the answer is yes. And another vaccine update, the state will now open its fourth community vaccination site at the Mall of America. We're told that that will open this week and that more than 8,000 uh, teachers, school staff and child care workers will be vaccinated at that, that site at the mall in its first week. Chris and Gia. Yeah, and that should help the vaccination numbers here for sure. Jennifer, thank you. Meanwhile, we're tracking new guidance from state health officials as cases start to go up in northwest and south central Minnesota. The state is urging parents and kids to get tested every two weeks until the end of the school year. They're also asking people to wear masks and stay physically distant for the next 90 days. Now here's a look at today's other top stories in your morning rush. Minneapolis City Council is taking up testimony on rent control in the city. Most renters support it, saying they'll no longer be able to afford to live in the city if rent prices keep rising. Landlords who oppose rent control say it actually reduces the amount of affordable housing. The council committee passed two measures, moving the rent control conversation forward. The Hazelden Betty Ford Foundation will announce its new CEO today. The Addiction Treatment Center's current CEO announced his retirement last year. Mark G. Mishek was the longest serving leader in the organization's 71 year history. A new reminder coming from the DNR this morning. If you have an ice fishing shelter on a lake in the lower two thirds of the state, you need to remove it by March 1st. That's one day after the close of walleye fishing season. You have until the end of the day Monday to get that done or it will be confiscated or destroyed. And older students at Minneapolis public schools could head back to classrooms in the spring. Under the district's new plan, students in grades 9 through 12 
12th can return to in-person learning on April 12th. Sixth to eighth graders can return the following week. Students can also choose to continue with distance learning. And that's your Thursday Morning Rush. Sunrise is live this morning from dark downtown Minneapolis, where we are just a couple weeks away from the trial of former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin, and the city is already preparing for whatever comes their way. And we're starting to get a better idea about what security will look like. And frankly, if you've seen any of these images, a lot of our Sunrisers are saying it's starting to look like a war zone with all of the fencing, the barbed wire and the road closures in downtown. City leaders say their main goal is to maintain safety and security in all facets. Residents may see more National Guard soldiers out in the community. For business owners, the city has new guidance for hiring security companies and boarding up their windows and doors. They're also urged to look at their insurance policies. Metro Transit's working with the city to keep riders informed about any delays or cancella cancellations that may come up. And Minneapolis Mayor Jacob Fry, he's hoping we're not going to see the same destruction to the city as we saw last summer. It allows us to have the, the proper deployment. It allows us to have the, the property, you know, community engagement teams set up. The time that we have now makes this an entirely different equation. All right, during the trial, most of the Hennepin County Government Center is going to be closed off to the public, but the city is setting up two demonstration zones where people can safely gather to protest. But yeah, the barbed wire, you guys, and all that fencing definitely does look like a war zone. Yeah, it was interesting when I drove past a police precinct where I live. Uh, they had probably 15 feet uh, foot fencing around the whole precinct and then the concrete barriers, too. So it's happening. Taking proactive mm -hmm, measures yeah. for sure. Let's get to Guy for our one thing weather. Hey, take a look at your hour by hour morning forecast planner here by 9 a.m. 26 warming up to 30 already just before lunchtime with sunshine and pretty quiet out there around the Twin Cities Metro. If you're coming from the Forest Lake area, quick check of drive times uh, just 10 minutes on 35 E southbound and 12 minutes if you're traveling 35 W. Well, investigators are digging deeper into that crash that injured Tiger Woods, what they're looking for inside the SUV. Plus more fallout over a Catholic school mom's lewd photos online. Why some of her supporters are now getting in trouble. Then a Wisconsin firefighter is fighting for his life after a shooting where no one pulled the trigger. And the Minnesota Wild taking action off the ice this morning to help out those in need. We're live at their food drive-thru with how you can get involved. 